Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to be talking about artificial intelligence meets music. And actually, artificial intelligence meets music composition meets a DAW. And the nice thing here is, your ears are probably going to bleed, as per the standard disclaimer, for my audio-related videos, but it's not going to be me making them bleed this time, it's going to be my computer. So that's the power and the wonder of the world of AI. But I gotta tell you, Ava, Iva, A-I-V-A, no idea how to pronounce that, I'm going to call it Ava for the rest of this video, is a really cool-looking program. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Black Friday may be over, but not over on the Unity Asset Store. You've got until December the 4th to pick up a ton of assets, 650 specifically for 50% off. On top of that, they have lightning deals, uh, including some that are still upcoming. Uh, these start off at 90% and they go based off the number of people buying them. So if we actually go back, we're going to see here, these are the ones that have been running the longest. And you're going to see you can still pick up some assets, even 80%, 70% off. They never go below 50% off. So if you're a Unity developer, you've got a couple of days left to pick up some incredibly good deals on assets. Assets. Thanks for sponsoring, and let's jump right back in. All right, so we're looking at Ava here. Uh, this is cloud-based and runs on Windows and Mac. And without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at it. This is it running. This is the local client. And basically, what it does is it creates music for you. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can give it inspirations, or you can just kind of give it a theme. So we're going to go ahead and create a new track. What you're seeing here is completely free. It just gives you no commercial license. Just something to be aware of. Now that you come in here, and you've got a couple of different views of how to start things off. So you can say, okay, I want to create an old school rap kind of song, or a lo-fi sound, or pop song, or whatever. Or we can go into advanced, which actually makes the menus uh, smaller. Uh, but I think it gives you a couple more drill down options, basically. So let's say we want to do like a fantasy score. So I can say, okay, fantasy. I come in here. I can pick the key that I want it to be. So let's make this. I, I know literally nothing about music. So let's do this. It's DB major because reasons. I'm going to make it fast. So I can pick the uh, default pacing for it. And then we can do inspir um, the instrumentation. These are the kind of music that, or the instruments that were used to create it. So if we wanted to make a small tavern band sound, you can see here they got a ton of different options here. We're going to do a Dragonborn Ensemble. This is basically a way of saying, let's make some Skyrim-y sounding music. We can pick how long we want it to be. So we're going to make it uh, 30 seconds to one minute. And we can say, all right, make us one track through seven tracks or sort of five tracks, I guess is the max. And done. So we can let it go ahead. It's going to create this. It spins off in the background. So while it's creating our song, I'm going to show you a couple of other options here. So instead of composing it from scratch using a theme or something, what we can actually do is provide influences. This is another option you've got, and i got to admit, it doesn't work as well as I would like, but it's an interesting concept. So you can upload, uh, say, uh, MP3s from your soundtrack. I can't play any of these for you just because of the way the DMCA works. So what I've already uploaded is the song Punk Rock Girl by the Dead Milkman, Blister in the Sun by the Violent Femmes, and Black Sabbath War Pigs as examples. And you can see they pick some of these up as a synthwave ensemble for Black Sabbath. If you know anything about Black Sabbath, that is an interesting classification. So you can send up these uh, raw files that can be used as inspiration, but the way that it works best is to send up a mid file or a MIDI file. And this is Ride of the Valkyrie. It's most famous from the intro to Apocalypse Now, but you, can, you, you probably already know it. It's not a great rendition. And let's go ahead and play it. So that song. So you can use these as raw inspiration. I find the MIDI inspirations work so much better than the uh, MP3 versions do. The MP3 versions, you, you actually get set up a waveform and you can pick the bit to be inspired by it. I found none of them worked right. I, I did find, though, using MIDI files works pretty well. So we'll use that. We'll come in here and we're going to say, okay, new composition. And we're going to basically build it off of that. So you can pick the uh, ensemble if you wanted. You can pick the key if you wanted. You can pick the duration. Let's do 30 seconds to a minute again, the number to create. And now it's going to derive new music based off of the Ride of the Valkyries. But in the meantime, our fantasy, our Skyrim-y themed song is now done. Let's go check out what it sounds like. You even notice some vocals in the background there. Sounds pretty good. If you didn't like it, literally just start another one. But here is where Ava gets actually kind of interesting, is you can edit this guy. So I can come in here, and I can open it in the editor. I can also do that via here. So let's go ahead, open this one up in the editor, and what you're going to see now is where this program really shines. This is where the DAW part comes in. There is a full functioning DAW in here for everything we just looked at. And we've got the ability to edit everything we saw. So you can see it's broken down. Uh, so your tempo is right here. If you want to switch the tempo, we could just blanket make everything faster if we wished. You see the tempo is controlled right here. We could also go ahead and edit that if we wanted to over here. You got control over the melody and how everything works. We also have control over that there as well. You've also got... 
note layout here, you're seeing that this is controlling three, tump, uh, three trumpets. Uh, so if we go down here, we look at the chords. Uh, we've got a number of different uh, instruments being played there. Again, keep in mind, this is all algorithmically generated. Bass being controlled here. And then we've got the extra, which is probably going to be where some of our voices come in. Oh, no, violins. And then we've got percussions, which is your drums and so on. And you can come in here and edit them. And for everything that we looked at, we could change how what the instrument was. So I've said instead of the epic kit, I come down here, I say, okay, uh, let's use orchestral drum kit number three instead. So that's just going to swap that drum kit out individually. Let's go back over here to our medley. And instead of three trumpets, let's change that to nine horns legato. All right, and now let's see what that does to our song. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of at the end of the timeline there. All right, let's go. So that made a very uh, definitive change to it. So let's change that out instead to uh, distorted electric guitars from 80s rock. Okay, sure, eighth note. All right, let's go ahead. And you can see the results as they're changing. Another thing we can do is actually come in here and change the notes uh, that we are. So there's the individual note that's played. Uh, we can switch over here into, I think it's pencil mode. And we can start adding new notes in, like so. Or you can play them, preview them over here. All right, so there you see pretty profound change we just made to the uh, 80s electric guitar that we added in. So the cool thing with this one is you do literally have the ability to come in here and tweak it to your heart's content. You can even come in here. There's like dynamics and special effects and so on that are being added. You see them all available. We can do uh, bass boost or vinyl effects as well. You can see over here, so we got dynamics. If I wanted to go ahead and change that, I could actually edit it. And then we can come in here and literally, I have no idea what I'm actually editing here, but you've got full control over just about everything you've created. So that's where this thing really shines. You have the ability to come in here and tweak your music to your heart's content. Now, the challenge is, again, we kind of get into the, you're limited in the number of downloads you've got, and you're really limited on the licensing on the free versions. But this kind of is a quick introduction to what the program's all about. You've also got some uh, setup templates. So if you don't really know what you're doing, start from the templates. Ditto for drums. So if you want to just get, oh, drums are not in yet. All right, so ignore that. So we're going back over here now. Here are, um, is our generated. This So this one is another one. This is uh, an epic orchestra inspired by Ride of the Valkyries uh, MIDI file. So let's see how it came out. Now fast forwarding. And to be honest, I actually can kind of see it. Now, when they take the inspirations from a mid file, you get good results that actually do feel like they were inspired by the original thing. And that makes more sense because the MIDI file, it knows what notes were used, what tempo to use and so on. But when it's doing it from a waveform, if you know the song Punk Rock Girl, like you are for me, Punk Rock Girl, like the way it sounds originally to this. Now, it's listenable music, but that has nothing in common. Now, let's go one step further. Here is one done by War Pigs. So that's almost unlistenable. So when it comes to the inspiration stuff, the influences, the stuff you want to bring in, I do generally find mid files work the best by the way in order to, to actually add an influence pretty straightforward just basically create a track upload an influence and drag and drop the file on here or you can grab an existing influence right here or again you can go to one of your influences and go over here and create a new track the other cool thing here is once you've actually created a track so go back over here so let's say this this rod of the valkyries we really liked it the all right no i meant over here the composed version Right here, so say we really like that or we like the uh, Skyrim-y sound one that they already did. You can come over here and you can use it as an influence to make a new version. So if you're kind of getting to where you'd like to be, you can basically just keep trying it over and over and over again 
and then eventually have what you like. If you do like something, so let's say I do like this track that they made for me right here, and I wanna use that in my game, that's when I come over here and I can just do a download, or you can download here. Now, as you saw from that mouse over, you do have a limited number of credits. So let's go quickly to that now. Oops, wrong direction. Uh, you can see here, uh, Ava, uh, it's available by the way at, uh, what is this? Uh, leave full screen for a second. AIVA.AI as the um, uh, website. You can see here the pricing. Uh, it's free, but they own the copyright on your music. You can't monetize it. Uh, you have to give them credit. By the way, uh, Ava, you get credit for all the music I created in this video. Uh, three downloads per month. Track duration is limited to three minutes. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can download in MP3 and MIDI file formats for the rendered results. If you want to use this commercially, uh, you can do it for 11 euro a month. They still own the copyright in that scenario. You got limited monetization. No credit was needed. You can download 15 a month. Um, so that's kind of a catch, but that's for if you want to only have it on YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Instagram. So if you want to use it in a game, then you're looking at 33 euro a month uh, with up to 300 downloads per month. Now, if you're not a musician though, but you know kind of what sound you want to go for, this actually could be a pretty nice approach. And if you are a musician, well, once again, they've got a decent set of tools going on here in terms of, um, it to actually edit things. So again, if I, I like the sound that they made here, generally, I could just come in here, I could open it in the editor, and then I can tweak all the individual tracks and instrumentation that they used, like a full functioning DAW. And this is actually pretty cool functionality, to be honest. And then on top, if you're, again, just, all right, I just wanted it to be a little bit faster. Instead, I could say, okay, let's make this 210 beats per minute, which is not a little bit faster, but a lot faster. And then, and, and honestly, I actually think that sounds really cool. And I have literally zero musical ability. But this is one of those things where if you're in the same boat as me, you can start from an inspiration, especially if you start from a mid file, it does a pretty good job of it. Tweak it in here until you get something you like, or you can send this off to someone else as a mid file and have them, you know, use it as a theme or a starting point. Just do be aware there are those licensing limitations. Other than that, very cool looking program to check out. So that's Ava, A-I-V, uh, what was it? AIVA.AI. Yeah, AIVA.AI. Available for Windows and Mac and runs entirely in the browser. Everything you saw here works the same way in the browser. So if you're on uh, Linux or whatever, you should be able to use it as well. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. Also, don't forget to check out the Unity. The link will be down below as well if you want. A couple days left in that sale. And that's it. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.